Today, I'm gonna show y'all how I personally cook a brisket. We got the smoker fired up out back right now. We're just gonna, we're gonna trim the fat off this thing. Most of the fat, 90% of it. So we don't throw that away. Next time we kill a deer, we're gonna use this fat to go with it to make some jerky or smoked links. There ain't no special art to this. Just start cutting the crap off. It's a lot of it. I'll leave a little bit on the top. Not much. Go back and clean it up once I get the majority of it off of there. Fat cap is thick. secret to a sharp knife, don't ever let it get dull. If you start feeling like it's slipping, it's not quite as sharp as it should be, take that steel and hit it a few licks and she's good as new. You ever let it get really dull, it's gonna be hard to bring it back. see what the plan is here, what I'm doing. So, I'm gonna finish this up and we'll get it all pretty up. We'll be back. All right, y'all, we're back. <clears throat> As you can see, we've got it all trimmed up. I thought I'd spare you. Can you see the brisket, Hunter? We're filming? Okay. So, I thought I'd spare you all the carbon of all the fat. I mean, you know what it looks like. So, and for time's sake, you know, we'll keep the video as short as possible. But this is the flat and this is the point. And the point came off the top side down on this end. This is where you get your burn ends and pieces and the most tender, I mean, look at that, man. Looks like Wagyu beef with all the marble in that. Ain't that beautiful? And then the flat is where you get your sliced or chopped brisket for sandwiches and what have you. So we left a little bit of fat on both sides of it. I separated them out. A lot of people cook the brisket in one piece. I don't like to do that. There's so much fat between the, the flat and the point, it, it's insane. It's this thick in places under there. We'll get all that mess out, and this way we can get a rub all over the whole thing and get a good bark on it. And so, this being a thicker piece of meat, it's gonna cook a little longer than the flat will because of the thickness of the meat. So, anyway, we got it ready. A lot of people put mustard, mayonnaise. Don't, you don't have to do that. I mean, man, you put mustard on my food, you can have it, I don't want it. So anyway, you do not need a binder. It's a bunch of crap, you don't need it. This is my Hardcore Outdoors original barbecue rub. It's kind of faded on the label on that way, you can see that, but anyway, I gotta get some more ordered. <clears throat> the combination of the salt and the sugar in these rubs, if you'll put it on there and let it sit a little while, it will pull the moisture out of the, out of the meat. That's what they do, the salt and the sugar pulls the moisture up and it creates its own binding agent or whatever, how you call it. It, it. It's what it does, it binds itself. And it'll get, if you let it sit there for about 30 minutes, it gives it a really wet look. Cause you can see it pulling the moisture up. You don't need none of that mess on your meat, man. So, I'm not stingy with this stuff. If you want a good bark, this rub, I'm not gonna tell you what I was in it cause it's my personal rub and I sell it commercially, but, you know, all rubs have salt and pepper, and sugar, and garlic, and a few other little ingredients in there. Everybody's a little different, but I'm not, I'm not stingy with this stuff, man. I put it on there. And it makes a major, major difference when it comes time to eat that, that meat. All right, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna press it just a little bit, get good contact. And that's all I'm gonna do to it. 
And this little bit, you let it sit there, you can see it. We'll put the camera on it. This is what I'm excited about right here. I think we're gonna make some burn ends out of this one. Cowboy candy. Maybe I should be a little more stingy with it because this is the last bottle I got to the order, so I don't know how long it's gonna take them to get it in. I need to order a few cases of this one and a few cases of my all-purpose seasoning. They're my two number one sellers on my rubs and, and stuff. You see, I mean, this it, it's, it's stuck. It ain't coming off, very, very little. If I hadn't moved it just then, that wouldn't come off. I'd let it sit there a little while. And so I'm gonna leave my season that side first, the fattier sides, and I'm gonna leave it up so that fat will render down from the heat and render back into the meat. And that's where you get a lot of your moisture, juicy brisket. you're gonna go against the grain and you don't want to cut them too thin so a lot of people will take see the grain running this way at an angle so a lot of people will take their knife and slice a piece off so they'll know where to start slicing well you do this enough you can see the angles in the meat so we'll start right here on this little point and cut our way back when it comes time to, <clears throat> to slice it Just me and the boys here, and two youngest boys, Hunter and Jake, so we can't eat all this brisket. We'll freeze some of it. I'll make some, maybe some brisket tacos, some uh, Texas Twinkies, jalapeno peppers stuffed with the brisket, wrapped in bacon, cooked on the grill with barbecue sauce, baste it on there and let it caramel out a little bit. Good to go right there, buddy. I don't worry about these edges too much, they're thin. <clears throat> so there we have it. Got your flat and your point. Can you see a little bit? Cameraman there, Hunter, is uh, I got a little bit of screen on the front, and I can just see just a little bit of myself. He's got a wide angle back there. So anyway, we're gonna let that sit for a few minutes. And the next time you see my ugly mug, we're going to be sticking it on the smoker where it belongs. All right, y'all. Got it about ready to go on the smoker now. Come and show us, honey. See what I was talking about? Let's set about 20, 30 minutes. See how wet the meat is? That's the salt and the sugar pulling the moisture out of the meat. That's, that's all you need. You don't need a binder. So then this other condiment crap all over your dead gum brisket. So we're going to stick this one in here. This is the flat. big in closer to the fire. There they are. I'm going to shut these lids and bump my fire up a little bit, get my temperature back up. Cooking it. real mesquite wood, which is what we have the majority of down here in South Texas. That suits me just fine. It's my favorite wood to smoke with. That and pecan. So, next time you see it, we're going to be pulling out to wrap it. All right. It has been, I don't know how many hours later, several hours. The lighting's not the best, but I'm doing the best I can. It got dark on me. Let's see what the internal temperature is. About 142, 144. I like it to get around 165, but that's good enough. My fire's getting bad low on me. Okay, I got 151 there, 165 there, we're good. We're gonna take these out and wrap them in foil and put them back until we in, reach the internal temperature of about 200, 205 tops. And we're gonna pull them off of here and let y'all see what they look like. We'll be back soon. All right, <clears throat> we finally got it cooked. 
It's late. You can probably see by my eyes I'm really tired. <clears throat> what I did is when it hit about 160-ish, somewhere in there, y'all saw that part. Uh, I wrapped them up, and I put some more of my hardcore outdoors, uh, or wherever it's at, original barbecue rub on both sides, and I wrapped it. And I put it back in the smoker, stoked up the fire, until the internal temperature of the meat hits between 2 and 205. Some of it was 205, some of it was 202, 201. Wherever you probe it, it's going to get variations of temperature. So as long as you're between 2 and 205. Look at that juice, man. This is the point. This is my favorite part. So I'm going to go to that first. Boy, I hate to let all that juice go to waste. I'm going to try to put it over here out of the way. All right. Let's see what we got here. Oh, man. Cut like butter. Look at that. <laughs> Quarter inch smoke ring. Here comes a pool test. No, no pressure. Pulls apart. It's just coming apart in my hand. I don't know what to tell you, man. <laughs> it just don't get no better than that. Good God. Mmm. Well. See what that looks like. Let's go to the flat. I dry my hand. All right. I'll move this over. We get done with this filming. I'll slice it all up and put it away. And move a bit. <clears throat> when you take it out of the smoker. You let it sit a little while and kind of cool down on its own. And it's referred to as letting it rest. The point rested for, I don't know, almost an hour. The flat here has not rested more than about 30 minutes, but like I said, it's getting kind of late and I'm tired, so we're going to cut into it hot. We have not done anything but retain moisture here, so it's not like we are going to let all the juice run out of this puppy. Hang on just a minute. If I can get it out of here. Wow. Look at that, man. Look at that. You see, we have one little sample piece there. Slicing like butter, man. Look at that. I should have let it rest a little more. It's not going to get the pool test like it's supposed to because I cut it kind of thick. But Oh, yeah. That worked out great. Wrong point. That beautiful smoke ring. Quarter inch, roughly smoke rain. Got a good bark on it from the rub. It don't get much better than that, man. Slice it, dice it, chop it. Tacos, sandwich. What are you gonna do with it? So, I hope I didn't leave anything out. If there's any more videos you'd like to see on cooking, Put it in the comments. Please like and subscribe. I forget to say that a lot. Almost all the time. I'm trying to get those watch hours up. So y'all please watch as many videos as you can. We'll get this thing monetized. And I'm going full force. Video, video, video. Whatever you want to see, we're going to do. So thank you for watching.